Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. I want to play with resin today, and I want to color that resin without it all having a metallic or a glittery look. So I don't want to use mica powder type pigments for this project. I also do want to use something affordable, but with great color options. So I'm going to use acrylic paint to color my resin, specifically Arteza Premium Acrylic. I received this set from Arteza to try out and ended up loving it. Now, before we move on, I want you to know that I am an Arteza affiliate now. That means that if you choose to buy their products and you go through my link, I'll get a little commission. It doesn't mean, however, that I will tell you a product is good if it's not. No commission is worth that. I became an Arteza affiliate because they make some good, very well-priced products that I was eager to show you. So, let's check out this paint. This acrylic paint is available in a variety of set sizes and tube sizes. I chose the 60 color set in order to have a wide color range from which to choose. The colors are all listed on the top of the packaging, including the opacity of each paint tube and their light fast rating. In this case, three, the higher number, is excellent, and one is the least light fast. Some companies use a reverse system where one is excellent and three would be not so good. Now, here's a tip. If ever you're not sure what the number system for a particular company is, in other words, is three good or is one good, look for a neon color. So in this case, I'm gonna look at neon pink and it has a one, so it's got one plus. Neon colors are always fugitive, meaning not light fast. So if it's got a one, chances are <laughs> one means not good in terms of light fast compared to the other paints. And then on the other end of the spectrum, look for earth tones like raw sienna, raw umber, these both have three. So those colors are almost always very light fast in any paint company's line. So given that these both have threes, I'm pretty sure the three would mean very light fast in this particular scale. So if you're ever in a paint store and you're kind of confused and you're not quite sure, that's the way to check. Now, if you end up wanting this set or any Arteza product, Arteza has set up a temporary discount code for all viewers to use with the links in the description box below. Shipping is free for any orders in the US and UK. In the description box, just pick the appropriate link for your country. Now, let's play with these colors and see what they're all about. When you open this box, you get 10 trays of six tubes each. And each tube is 22 milliliters of paint. The side of the box has the color chart as well as the top. The trays are all sorted by color family and each individual tube of paint has the name of the color, the light fast rating, the opacity, the pigments used, and the color number. The paints that I've pulled out for today's project are titanium white, Mars black, and gold. I figured one metallic just to see how it works. And the colors are cerulean blue, yellow green, yellow pale, orange yellow, and magenta light. For this piece, I'll be working on a 10 inch MDF round that I've already gone ahead and painted black. 
To prevent resin running over the side, I've made a dam using black electrical tape. If you've had trouble removing blue painter's tape, for example, because it rips, try electrical tape. It's usually much cheaper, it's stronger, and difficult to rip. With that done and my two-part resin all mixed, I pull out my black paint to start mixing my negative space color. Here is a dollop of paint I'll be adding to about 25 milliliters of resin. I start out by mixing it into a much smaller amount of resin to get a good smooth mix going and then I'll add the rest. Once the entire amount is uniform, I pour it out and spread it using a silicone brush. I love these because nothing sticks to them and they're super easy to clean. Now, if you look carefully, you'll see that my resin is thickening up a bit. That is very common when using acrylic paint as a colorant, especially if you add a bit more than is recommended. And what's recommended is usually about 5% of your mix being the paint and the other 95% being resin. But because I want my colors to be bold, I am probably pushing the envelope and I will see thickening. Personally, I don't mind. I often prefer it a little because it keeps colors where I put them. When you pour resin colors in, onto your surface, sometimes they kind of migrate a little bit and they spread more than you might have wanted. But if it's thicker, it doesn't do that. So for me, I like that, but it may not be what you're expecting. So I want you to be aware of that. Now, when I mix my colors, since I need smaller amounts of each, about 10 milliliters at most for each, I'm using these little silicone cups. They make pouring so much easier and a little precise because of these cute little spouts. And they're endlessly reusable, so they're good for your wallet and for the environment. You can see the amount of paint I squeezed out and how easily it blends into the resin. Now I know that within a few minutes, thickening will begin, so I'm pouring this where I want it now. The thickening is going to resemble curing if you see it happening, but it's not the same process. True curing will come later. Since I know this is going to thicken, I'm only going to mix each color right before I use it so that they're as liquid as possible when I pour them. If I mixed all my paints up first, some would be too thick to comfortably pour when I want to pour them later. So I'll do each one right before I need it. I know that I'm going to be adding a little more paint than is normally recommended because I want really deep color since my negative space is black and the colors kind of sink into the black a little bit and I really want them to be vibrant so I kind of I'm gonna push the envelope a little. <laughs> For this demo I purposely chose some opaque colors like the blue and the magenta as well as some semi-transparent colors like the yellow and green so you'll be able to see the difference in how they appear once they hit the black, especially the green, very different than the blue, for example. Now, for what I'm painting, <laughs> okay, I have a hint of a plan. <laughs> it was not fully fleshed out. <laughs> I know, surprise, surprise, right? <laughs> I just kind of want to see where this takes me. But I'm kind of sort of thinking of a, I don't know, like a vine-like thing running through a series of flower-like things uh, or something kind of sort of maybe like that. <laughs> oh, it could end up looking like puppies at the circus, but I'm shooting for a vine-ish kind of thing with some flowery things. That's the plan. <laughs> sort of, kind of. <laughs> With all my colors down, it's time to start working them. I really like how rich they are and how they pop against the black. It's so, so cool. Right now, they're a bit stiff 
and less movable, which is good because they're staying put. So I'm heating them up with my heat gun. This also has the added benefit of popping bubbles for me too. I like the cell things that are forming. I'm gonna have to make a piece taking advantage of those at some point because I think they're really cool, but I don't think they're gonna survive much given what I'm gonna be doing making the flowers, but they're cool. Once the resin becomes warm enough and is less viscous, you'll see it start to really move. And now I have to make some decisions. Namely, what am I going to sculpt <laughs> and shape? Am I making flowers or puppies? <laughs> okay. I really can't see how I'd make puppies, so <laughs> let's make flowers. We can do that, yeah. Let's do flowers. <laughs> Of course, we can call them alien flowers if they get too weird looking. Remember, embrace the abstract. And what's fun to do in resin is to create a sense of depth. So they could be deep, profound alien flowers. <laughs> An easy way to achieve um, the look of depth is to pour clear resin in spots. The clear will push open windows to the layers beneath and create instant depth. It'll also cause some other colors to float on top. It's, it's really interesting. And it's frustrating because I can never really show that well on camera. It's one of those, you gotta be there to understand it. So I'll try my best to, to show it to you later, but I don't know how that'll go. I tried dragging my skewer through the resin, and you can see that the resin has already thickened back up a bit. So a little heat again will soften things back up for me. When you use your heat gun, keep it moving a bit. Try not to stay in the same spot for more than a few seconds, so as not to really over work that part of the resin it could kind of burn or like instant cure you don't want that so keep it moving short controlled blasts of heat are fine even a lot of them but not a prolonged one i'm having fun gardening <laughs> creating my flower like shapes and sculpting the vine but then I don't know, I realize I don't like the ball of spiraling white at the foot of the vine kind of thing that I'm calling a vine. I wish it had more color, so I don't know. I add my last bit of blue and clear and I use my heat to blend it into the rest of the piece and I don't know, I'm not loving it, but I'm going with it. I thought about swirling the blue in, but I, I don't know. I think I, 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 I overworked this area. So I'm going to settle for this, at least for now. If I thought I would have been adding more resin, I would possibly have left the tape on and removed it after it had hard cured. That way I would have had a little bit of a lip along the edge and adding a new layer of resin would have been particularly easy because that lip would have been sort of like a border and would have kept it from running over the sides if I didn't want it to. But I thought I was done, so you see me removing the tape. The resin is no longer moving. So like if I tilted the canvas right now, the resin really wouldn't shift. So it's about the consistency of like uh, slime, like that kids play with. So removing the tape now lets the edge round off nicely without dripping down the side. Now it's gonna look horrible as you're removing the tape and it's gonna scare you but it will correct itself and become lovely and smooth, I promise. 
This looks horrifying right now, especially because it's pulling resin off, but you'll be fine. Pulling a Band-Aid off is worse. It's less gooey, <laughs> but it's way more painful. And remember, you also don't have to do it this way. You can just let the resin run over the sides to begin with, so you wouldn't even need a tape dam, or leave the tape on until the piece is cured. So that's another option. You don't have to do this step because I know it can look terrifying. Okay, for me, it's time to put this to bed. I like some of it. <sighs> Not all of it, but I'm hoping enough of it. <laughs> it's a few hours later. I've stared at this good and long. I love the top, but I'm bummed out by th this mass. The washed out look that I unfortunately created over here and the not my cup of tea shape thing happening over here. They, they just, they have to go. But how? My plan had been to make small resin pores over these areas. Make new flowers in them and then top coat the whole thing. But then I remembered these. I'd open them, but never use them for anything. So let's play with these markers. I got super lucky. There was a light olive color. I mean, I, mean, I guess that's what that is. A gold, a brighter green, not, not a loud green, but brighter. And an awesome, really, really pretty blue. And Look how well they go with this piece. It's kind of crazy. It's like I called a marker company and said, hey, can you make me a couple of markers that would go with this, please? <laughs> so since the heavens were smiling on my art supplies, I went to town covering what I didn't like. These markers, I got to tell you, are super satisfying to use. They come ready to use. You don't have to prime them, you know, that some paint markers or pens you got to push the tip in and out a couple of times so that the ink will flow to them these aren't like that you open them and they're ready to go they're super juicy and they give really nice coverage the point is very nice it's not ultra fine but it's super useful I, the only thing i'm bummed about is that they only come in these eight colors as far as i know On resin or a non-porous surface, they can be wiped off for a couple of minutes. So if you make a mistake, it's easy to correct. Then when they dry, you can varnish or resin over them. I did a little test to make sure. I'm not certain how durable they are if not sealed, but I will kind of road test them a little bit for that down the line. But they're going to get covered with resin in this particular piece. If you're enjoying this video, leave a comment, a thumbs up, and definitely subscribe and click the bell to know when new videos are out. I had a lot of fun putting in spirals and little dots to give this piece a little bit more me, yeah. I hugely encourage you to do that with your art. These are your babies. Definitely give them memories of you to take out into the world with them. <laughs> Especially if they're not gonna live with you. Like if you're gonna be selling your work, give them a little piece of you to take with them. I think you're gonna find that you love your work more and more as you give yourself permission to be you as you create. All right, stay tuned for close-ups of this after the resin top coat. Nothing special needs to be done, just a thin coat that I will let run over the side this time. I've taped up the bottom to prevent accumulating drips. Okay. 
a little quick torching for bubbles. And it's bedtime for this piece. All right, see you in a few. <laughs> Before we move on to the close-ups, I thought it might help to see the tape coming off. You can see all the resin that would have been stuck to the board if not for the tape. What's fun about the electrical tape is it's really easy to go around a circle with it. A lot easier to do than with painter's tape that you have to have a zillion little creases in or cut into lots of little pieces. The electrical tape makes curves very easily. Now I'm showing this to you in real time so that you can see the ease of removing the electrical tape. You'll see some black paint from before when I had painted the whole board black, but the little resin bumps are all gone in under two minutes. I can now either sand this back down to the MDF color with a fine grit sandpaper, or I can just paint the whole back black. That part is entirely up to the artist. <laughs> okay, now let's see the pretty. It's the next day and this is all done and I love it, love it. The Arteza colors make me smile the metallic accents are just enough and really pretty, I think. What I've been really enjoying about my art journey here on YouTube is that every piece teaches me new things and so many are unlike anything I've ever made before. This is true of this one too. I enjoyed the ease of adding the Arteza paints to the resin. I love my large choice of colors now. I mean, I've got over 50 more to play with. I will experiment to see how much less I'd have to mix into the resin to prevent thickening or at least minimize it. And I'll also test to see if other resins react the same. I've got a few different resins here, so I'll try and see. I know I'll be using these paints again, not just for resin. I can use them for standard painting, for acrylic pouring, and I will definitely use these markers again. I loved them. I hope you found this demo helpful. Remember links and a coupon code for anything you want on the site are available for you in the description box below the video. Thank you all for being my art family and spending some of your time with me. I love sharing with you and I'm already looking forward to seeing you soon. Let your creative nature shine. See you soon. Bye now.